as it's Mother's Day today, and for all the mums who are checking in to listen to this video, I really do think there's no better work to talk about than Leonardo's Burlington cartoon, which can be found in the National Gallery. It is so full of love and tenderness, and I really think it perfectly captures the mood of today. You might look at it and think, gosh, that's a bit murky and brown and dark. You might be a bit disappointed, but hold fire. I promise great wonders are going to be revealed. So let's start with what it actually is. It's known as the Burlington House cartoon. And the word cartoon here comes from cartone, meaning large piece of paper. And in actual fact, it's lots of, lots of small pieces of paper stuck together. And on it, in order to build up the drawing, Leonardo has used charcoal and white chalk for the highlights. Now, we tend to know Leonardo best of all for his famous finished paintings. But really, I think we can learn so much more from his drawings. There are hundreds of them with the most amazing variety of subject matter, and they give such a good insight into his extraordinarily creative mind, but also very restless. And by this point in the Renaissance, and we're talking about 1499, 1500, just at the turn of the century, drawings were sometimes considered to be works of art unto themselves, and this is probably the case with the Burlington cartoon. So it's largely finished, not entirely finished, but largely, but Interestingly, it's not perforated. This means it's not punched with holes. So the purpose of punching it is that artists would make holes along the contours of the forms on a cartoon, which they would then turn around. They would put the cartoon against a wall or a panel or a canvas or whatever it was that they wanted to have the finished piece on. And with powdered charcoal in a bag, they would spread the powder through the holes onto the surface below in order to transfer the image. Now, with no perforation, it's possible this was supposed to be a drawing in its own right. Or maybe it was going to be transferred, but Leonardo just never got round to it. I actually think it's the former. So let's talk about who it depicts. We have the Madonna on the left, and she is sitting on the lap of her mother, St Anne. St Anne is looking back towards her daughter, and the Madonna is looking down to her son, Christ. Christ, in turn, is looking across to his cousin, John the Baptist, and he's holding his hand up in blessing. So these guys are all saints, they're all holy characters, and therefore, where are their attributes? Where are their halos? This is an amazing moment in art history because Leonardo begins to break away from tradition in so many ways, and this is one of the ways. He's not really so concerned about things like this. And yes, you certainly can look at some of his finished paintings and you can see extremely subtle halos, very, very lightly depicted and, and uh, other attributes. But here, he doesn't really feel like he needs it. He feels like he can render spirituality through other means. And this is what we're going to talk about later on. So here we've got this family unit who seem so full of love. And I just want to focus on this. It is Mother's Day after all. And it, it's just we just need to ask the question of how can you depict love. Love is such a nebulous thing. Again, prior to Leonardo, artists would use much more traditional means. If we were to look back to the very cusp of the Renaissance, back to the early years of the 14th century, we would find paintings like this. This is Giotto, and you can find this in the Scriveni Chapel. It's depicting St Anne and St Joachim, who are Mary's parents, Madonna's parents, meeting at the Golden Gate and kissing. It's so tender, but the tenderness is depicted through gesture. 
rather than what becomes known with Leonardo as psychological realism, and, and forgive the slight blurriness of this slide. So gesture is used at this point at the beginning of the Renaissance. Let's move further forward in history to a time very close to Leonardo in the 1470s, 20 odd years or so before the Burlington cartoon was crafted. In order to depict love, you could just stick a Cupid into the painting like you can see here, just at the center top. Cupid was the god of love, he was cheeky, he was spreading his arrows all over the place. And by this point, by the point of Leonardo in 1499, with the brilliant work of Botticelli, mythological subjects such as this were really coming into vogue, so you can just use a Cupid. Or you could create love by sticking a Venus into your painting. And again, this is another work by Botticelli. This is in the National Gallery, as well as the Burlington cartoon. She is the goddess of love. She is the mother of Cupid. Though in actual fact, this really hilarious painting is perhaps less about love and much more about sex. But with the advent of Leonardo, we got a whole new, thrillingly exciting chapter in the history of art. This is just really something else. This is truly realistic and totally unlike what we have just seen and, and what came before Leonardo. Look at these faces. The Madonna is, is glowing with pride and love and tenderness for her son. And St Anne, her mother, is on the right. She equally is looking towards her daughter with such gentleness. It's, it's actually amazing for me to focus on this work again. The last time I thought about it seriously, I didn't have a daughter. Um, and now I've got um, a little girl who's six months old and it just adds a whole new amazing dimension to this work. So both of them are just so absorbed in their own children, absorbed with love and tenderness. It's so incredibly beautiful. Um, and as you can see, it's so very relevant for Mother's Day. So let's think about how Leonardo actually does it. He does it by completely revolutionizing the use of something called chiaroscuro. This is a classic cracker of a word. Um, used time and again in the Renaissance, and it actually means light, light and dark, chiara light, scuro dark. And by the use of this chiaroscuro or this shading, he models the forms of the face to create a completely realistic and believable head, thoroughly three-dimensional on a two-dimensional surface. And using this shading, he fine-tunes the, the expressiveness of a face. He can kind of mould it into whatever emotion he desires and here the emotion is love. Look at those half moon highlights below the Madonna's eyes. and These sit against the patches of shadow at the corners of her eyes and her lower cheeks. The, the light and the dark merges together so beautifully by this sort of smoky effect that's known as sfumato. Another great thing that Leonardo worked with in order to be able to model his forms and create them so realistically. And again, if you look at the Madonna's lips, you can see there's an extra bit of shading at the corner of her mouth and below her lower lip. You, you feel that this is not going to be a big toothy grin in a couple of seconds. It's so much stiller than that. It's this amazing sort of half smile of inner contentment. And we see the same thing on the mouth of St. Anne as well. And it, it becomes this amazing circle of love, which absolutely adds to the spirituality and divinity of this work, this idea of a circle, something continuous, never ending. So that we've got the Madonna looking down to Christ. Christ looks across to John the Baptist. And if you look just between Christ and John's heads, you can see Anne's unfinished hands, hand, which points up to God as though to say that all of this 
gloriousness is his handwork, his handiwork, sorry. And her hand takes us back up to her face. And her face takes us to the Madonna and then down to Christ, up the hand, back to Anne. And the circle just continues and continues. It's like this amazing wave of spirituality, of spiritual love, of human love. And it's balanced so beautifully by the rhythm of those up and down knees. Can you see Madonna's knee starting on the left, moving up and then down again and then up? It's, it's a rhythm and then down to John the Baptist's knee. It's just so beautiful. And as was typical of Leonardo, he has used a triangular composition to create stability and strength. And again, this underpins the central message of this beautiful piece. He doesn't need those halos. He doesn't need those attributes. He can just do it through his use of chiaroscuro, his use of sumato, and his amazing use of geometry and rhythm. And he does it in such a steady and such a still way. Really everything changed after Leonardo. There was simply no looking back. And once he mastered this deeply emotive psychological realism, as it became known, artists could only attempt to emulate him, but well, really, they, they failed. No one could do what Leonardo could do. And he totally deserves his fame. And it's really not just because of paintings like the Mona Lisa, great though that painting is, it's because of really special works like this. And, and there are a couple of Leonardos in the National Gallery, but gosh, this one is, is just the best. And when the gallery opens up again, please do go and find this amazing cartone. It's so worth it. I hope you enjoyed that. And for all the mothers listening, a very happy Mother's Day to you. If you'd like to hear more of our talks, please visit our YouTube link. And for more about the company, Artscapes, visit www.artscapesuk.com. Thanks so much for listening.